This is a quick demonstration video of routing rules with Ultra Gateway uh, setting up routing rules. So of course, there's no need to be uh, technically adept to set up routing rules. Pretty much any user could set these up without much technical knowledge. And I'll give you a quick demonstration on how that's done. So first, let me show you uh, under connections in the Ultra Archive Plus product, um, you've got auto routing, repair, outgoing, and incoming. So we usually start with incoming. These are nodes that have sent to the Ultra Archive Plus. They get automatically created if they're not already here. And if, of course, if they're already here, it simply replaces them. So for example, incoming 12, I know is my store SCP, or store SCU rather, that I'm using to simulate a modality. So I'm gonna rename it to store SCU modality, just as this, give it a, a quick name. There's some processing information you can set up. You can give it a, um, a user can have it get set to a certain study status automatically. I'm going to have it set to authorized. Um, you could just type whatever you want in here if they wanted to. Uh, you could put a wait to convert so it doesn't automatically import it right away. So it's like an ultrasound or something like that. It can um, um, put a wait on it. You can have uh, you can apply a QC process to it so that it automatically corrects the DICOM headers and things like that. So lots of little options in here. But once I have my uh, my incoming set up, so there's my my incoming. We also have to set up outgoing. So I just have store SCP set up here. I have store SCP running in a uh, command line just to simulate an archive that we could send to or to any node that we would send to downstream, just a very basic simulator. Uh, you can bind it to a specific uh, MAC address or to a specific NIC card if you're multi-homed. Um, obviously, you put the, the host name, the E title, the port number, that's all the standard stuff. You can do, uh, choose what your preferred transfer syntax is. Current just does whatever the cutty, uh, study is currently stored as, or you can do um, any of these other formats that we support for, uh, for sending. Um, if you choose to use encryption, you can certainly turn that on, but the node you're sending to has to support encryption. And again, there's a whole bunch of options in here that you could set. You can override the calling and call the e-titles and things like that. You can have it roll the backup. Um, so a bunch of different options. Then I go to my auto routing tab, and this is where I set up my routing. So let's say I'm creating a rule. I'm going to call it workstation. So my rule is active. I'm going to trigger this rule based on the study being received. I could do it image level, so it does. Uh, it treats each image individually, so it routes it in real time. Um, I can choose which incoming I want to route from, or I can just say all incoming. I'm just going to say all, but I could very well go down here and choose just the one that I created to simulate. And I'm gonna do all. You can set up timing. So if you only want the studies to be routed when they're received during certain times of the day, for example, if you're sending to someone to read at night, um, you could turn that on. And then the rules are how you set up uh, the evaluation of DICOM tags to make routing decisions. So for example, in this case, I'm gonna do a very simple example here. I'm gonna say modalities and study contains CR. And I think I'm also going to try uh, institution name contains ultra rad. So now my study has to be a CR, and the institution name must contain the word ultra rad. I could also change it to or logic. I'm going to leave it as and because I want both of those to be true. Or actually, I'll just make it an or. There we go. So now it could be either a CR or it says ultra rad and it's going to route. Um, and I can continue to add additional tags. So I can keep stacking up tags. It uses just standard order of operations to parse out uh, the tags. Um, that's certainly one way to do this. If you see a tag or if you don't see a tag that you want to use in the routing rule, uh, you could add additional tags to this list using our uh, uh, database. So in the database, you can enable additional tags. Then I tell it where I want to route to. In this case, I'm going to tell it to route to store SCP. So when it receives it, from store SCU, it's then going to, and, it, and these rules are true, it's going to go ahead and route it to store SCP, which is another tool that I'm going to run. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, we can do pass-through routing, which passes through the AE titles. I'll turn that on just to show you what it looks like. But it'll basically pass through all the AE titles, so it's truly just a router. There's a whole bunch of other options in here, but one I do want to talk about briefly is advanced. Um, if you have rules that cannot be done with these with this basic wizard, uh, you could create more advanced routing rules by writing your own scripts. Uh, so you can, it, this will compile in uh, a text file uh, that's written in bb.net, and we give you some libraries to get and set DICOM tags. So we, you have some standard functions that we include with the product that when it compiles on demand, it passes all of the DICOM tags into your, repair, into your advanced script. 
Um, you can use those tags to do logic. That, you know, all the tags that are in the data set, you can modify those tags if you like while you're evaluating the tags and then you pass control back to the Ultra Gateway or Ultra Archive Plus and it will either route the data for you or it won't route the data depending on, on uh, whether you return true or false for this particular rule. So I just wanted to show you that real quick. So the last option here I should show you just very quickly is the repair option. This allows you to modify uh, DICOM tags as they're being received. So I can go in here, uh, for example, I'll select store CP and I'll say change I name. Maybe I want to change the institution name. And then under repair rules, I could go in here and say set the institution name. I could set it to a static value. I could do some basic logic in here. You can split tags. You can move one tag to another tag. For example, I could go in here and tell it to take um, the modality and study and move it into institution name, for example. Um, so lots of neat things you can do with the repair. But just like the routing, you can also create your own uh, rules to repair the DICOM header. We call them repair, but basically you're coercing the DICOM header. Uh, so you write your own rules in VB.net. They get compiled on demand uh, into the service, and then it carries out whatever instructions you've codified into your VB.net script. I don't want to save that rule because we don't want to um, ruin the institution name here because we're going to test with that. So now that I've set up my routing rules, right? So if I look in outer routing, I've got my routing rule. I'm going to go ahead and try to send a study into my gateway. And you can see here on the right hand side, it flashed up real quick, but it did receive the study. And then if I look over here and look in my outgoing log, you'll see that it actually routed the study. So I'll show you my incoming log. It showed that I received Natalie Caldwell. This is the record right here. It was just received. And as soon as it was received, it was too fast for us to see it, but it routed Natalie Caldwell uh, to store SCP out the other side. So we can see that it was received and then it was routed. Um, and just to show you, I'll take a larger study as an example. So let's see, here's a study with uh, 255 images. Um, if I try to send that manually, so if I'm a user that just wants to send a study real quick because it needs to get somewhere, I can select it, hit send. And since this one's a little bit larger, it'll be in the queue long enough for us to see what it looks like while it's sending. If you've got a lot of records that are being sent, you will see them all stacked up in this queue, um, and you'll see what the status is for those records being sent.